may come as a surprise that the land we know today as Point Pleasant Park has not always been this way. It began with the Mi'kmaq who first discovered this land. Every inch belonged to them from the branches to the sand. It was a place for many warriors whose murdered bodies were found to be at peace and harmony while resting in the soils of the ground. The given name Amutaki to the grave which holds these men was a site to pray and remember. It was a spirit place back then. They would also host events. In May, after the first new moon, they would gather for the spring feast, but this would come to an end soon. In the year of 1749, Edward Cornwallis weighed anchor offshore. A young British settler who had ripped the land of its core. He was given orders by the British whose government he had to please, to wipe out the nature of the park and tear down all the trees. The thick, healthy forest was transformed to empty and flat for new civilians to build homes and protect the army from combat. Cornwallis came to realize without woods it was too exposed. The wind and the weather made it uncomfortable and cold. So what was swept from the Mi'kmaq would remain unused and bare, stripped of its nature, but the immigrants didn't care. It was only a matter of time before the space would come alive. Forts were built to retract enemies so the delicate harbor could survive. With all the damage done to the land from disturbing the roots and soil, it continued to grow as it once did, for its beauty would not be spoiled. It would eventually be abandoned before the 21st century came, and although the fort still remained, it would never be the same. Rather than hiding the city from the dangers of the war, it now welcomes everyone to a beautiful park to explore, filled with historical monuments and Shakespeare by the sea. Point Pleasant became a main attraction and a splendid place to be.